today I'll show you how to build this. A nice, clean, simple Ranger belt. I uh, don't mind the blood on it. I nailed myself with the wing dividers. But that being said, I'm not planning on selling this belt. It's sized for me and I'm leaving it this way. So first off, we're gonna use a seven to nine for our belt blank. And you need to flat this first. You can do this a couple of ways. You can use a big straight edge and a rotary knife and all that, but I'm lazy. So I generally just flat it with my table. And to do that, throw some, well, don't throw them. Set some granites on it. Uh, one works fine if you're very careful, but I do recommend having two. And this is just to help the leather not move around while we're flatting. So just like that. Then I'm going to take my strap cutter and I'm going to make sure that it is set to where the deepest trough in this leather is slightly less than the crap than the um, strap cutter is. So that I'm sh cutting a bit off all the way down the length of the piece. And for that, we'll do this. You just want to make sure that cut. It's a little bit deeper than the leather is. And we're just going to come down. just like this. Now I've got a flat edge without having to use the straight edge and crawl all over my leather. So now I'm taking these granites off. Next thing I like to do, even though I just flatted this edge, I like to take another quarter to half inch off Usually I go right at a half inch and I'll use this for any keepers, but this helps generalize and even the edge out because there's still going to be a little bit of wave and variation in that edge and this helps kind of mellow it. Plus you can use this half inch strip for things. Now, even though this is a ranger belt, I'm only going to go to an inch and a half wide because I want it to be kind of a petite belt. I don't want it to be really wide. The problem with really wide belts is they usually don't fit anybody's belt loops on their pants. So let's do an inch and a half. Now you can always use straps for this. Uh, I find using sides is always best. For one, it's more cost effective because you're not having to pay for the straps to be cut down, you're doing it yourself. So I'm gonna square this guy off. And while I've got it here, I'm gonna go ahead and clip these corners. And the thing with Ranger belts especially is they're usually square ended or clipped end. They're not going to have a pointed end. Now, I'm going to set this over here and while i am got it over there, I'm going to go ahead and cut another strap at one inch wide. Now that I've got my inch strap, Done with this leather. I'm 
Okay, I've got my one inch strap. I'm gonna knock a nice round end onto it. You can always do really fancy ends on Ranger belts. They're kind of known for it. Uh, that being said, since I'm just showing you how to make one, I'm not gonna bother with all the fanciness. So from here, take your wing dividers. Let's find the center and just really lightly scratch this. You don't have to like push these in. I see a lot of the time people push them way down in and you've got a line that literally never disappears. So I'm gonna just really lightly scribe that. From here, I'm gonna figure out how I want that buckle to sit. So I want this buckle to sit right about here. One about that much on the end. So I'm just making a mark so I can see it. And I'm gonna punch a oblong right here. Half or three quarters works. It depends more on the buckle than anything. Um, if you only have a half, and one and three quarter, just do that. So now I am using um, Segma snaps for this. From here, we'll come back on the face piece. You wanna come back about an inch. Punch a hole, another inch, another hole. Then we're gonna take this guy, fold him over and come in with our eighth. And I'm not punching all the way through, I'm just making the marks. This way I can make sure that I center them. See that one at the top got off a little bit. Then we'll take this guy. There we go. So that is done up. All right, so now I've got my billet cut out. It is time to split this down or skive it down. You're aiming for half thickness and you wanna start just below the slot and go from the slot to the end. Don't do the side that's actually going to be attached to the belt. And if you're doing this with the splitter, make sure your splitter's attached. Um, mine isn't, but that's because I don't have room to do it and I know how to do this. Plus mine is extremely sharp. We're gonna set this guy off to the side for now. We're going to take this one inch strap and clip the end of it. Then we're going to start about two, three inches, let's call it three inches in. And we're going to scribe that middle line very lightly. So we're going to start right about here. Then set your wing dividers to an inch and an eighth or whatever your arbitrary measurement is. Mine's an inch, inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter. We're gonna go one and two and three, four and five. So now I'm gonna punch these five holes. Do not cut the end yet. And do yourself a favor, do not punch these tiny. Um, use a hole that's big enough for that tongue to get through very easily. So 
So now, what I'm going to do, and this is very important, do not chop it off right there. Don't do that. Put your buckle on. Put your keeper on about where it's going to be. And then you want to cut that tip to where this tip at the very smallest opening is right about here. So I'll do this guy right there. And the thing is, a lot of people mess this up and they pull this tip right to here. And then as you know, the wearer gets a little bit bigger around Thanksgiving, all of a sudden this belt is sitting with the tip going like that. Doesn't look good. So now I'm going to lay this tip on here. And I'm going to trace it. I'm tracing it all the way over here. From here, you can use a pair of shears, you can use scissors, you can use a knife. Wow, these are dull. Those are trash. I generally prefer a knife, but sometimes I just use shears because I'm being lazy. We're going to rough this. The reason we're roughing it and not fine cutting it right now is because we need to come in here and mark just really faintly. Right there, you can even use something that's square to make sure that you get your marks nice and square. Set your wing dividers to be a little bit more than twice the thickness, right about twice the thickness of that metal. We're going to go like that. Now, before I really do much more, I'm going to just clip this end. You don't want this leather trying to shove all the way up into that end. It doesn't work right. And then I'm going to use a knife. And I'm just pushing this straight down so that I get a nice clean edge to work with. So, our billet in looks like that. We're going to slide this guy on. Make sure he fits. Yep. If you see right there, it got off a little bit. That's not a big deal. Take this and just work it out a little bit. And it won't be noticeable. From here, we're going to come in and make this belt. So you want to put your buckle on. And you want to line it up. I like my buckles to be right like that. And I'm going to just come in here and kind of put a tick mark right at the end. This just helps me keep everything aligned. Then I'm going to take this billet and lay it out. Now, when you take the belt measurement, you're measuring from the tip of the tongue of the belt to the middle hole. That's the hole that the user uses. Don't let people tell you that, oh, I'm a 32, because 
if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna say, oh, he's a 32, and you're gonna make that belt 32 inches long, and it will not fit. Also, people lie. They lie all the time about how big their belts are because they don't wanna admit that they're big. Another thing you can do is if you're, if whoever you're making the belt for has a belt that they wear, do it just like this. There we go. That's where this belt would fall for me. So now that I've got this marked out where it's supposed to go, I'm gonna just do this. I'm marking through so that I can see where this guy goes. Cool. Then since we're going from an inch to an inch and a half, set your wing dividers to one quarter inch. And you're gonna to wanna to just kind of mark this. We're just kind of putting down where we're going to put these belt strap, these billets on. That way we don't get glue everywhere. So hold that guy down. I'm gonna just use this all to go around. And you wanna stitch down at least a little bit. So I'm gonna mark him to right here. And on the face piece, I'm gonna make the same mark. That way when I do my border stitch on this face piece, I know where to start and stop for just the decorative versus what's actually being attached to the belt. Now over here, we're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna come over right about where that is and just lightly scribe these two lines. Line them up. And mark them down. Just like that. Pull it off to the side a bit. Now make sure that you've got enough room right here that that buckle can get all the way in there. Rule of thumb is however wide your holes are, be about that wide. Now over here, take and put your buckle tip on if you're using one, line everything up, and then you wanna just cut off right about there to where when the belt's hanging out and just chilling, it's not, this isn't flopping around. A lot of the times we use good silver for this and you don't want that silver getting messed up. Then we're gonna cut this billet off. Just like that. And knock this tip in. Last but not least, we need to make room for our keepers. For that, you're going to take your grid ruler. And you come in from this tip about an inch and a half, however wide the belt is within reason, don't come in four inches if you're not, you don't need that much. We're gonna just lightly scribe this. Then I'm gonna set my wing dividers to a half inch. The reason is I want the keeper to sit underneath that billet and not be visible. I'm gonna do that. Then with my oblong, come in and knock these guys in. Now, since we don't want a big knot right there, flip this guy over and use a French edge beveler to take that down quite a bit.
Don't go paper thin because you will tear it out on accident if you do. But go to at least half thickness. Then we're going to take the keeper we made earlier. Split it to half thickness. And you're going to come in here and wrap it. So when you wrap it, give it just a little bit. Make sure that you're lapping it so that you can glue it together. But do not glue it together yet. So just like that. Now it's time to die, tool, do whatever you want to this belt. Um, I'm actually going to just leave this one natural because I think it looks fine. Okay, so now that you've come in and died, tooled, finished all your edges, cool, perfect job. It's time to do your liner on this piece. Um, Ranger belts generally are lined. It's up to you if you want to, but I do recommend it. For a liner, I've got some one to two ounce or two to three ounce. I actually keep this pre-cut at an inch and three quarters because I do a lot of belts and it's easier to just do it pre-cut. I'm gonna cut the piece I need and then grab my glue. From here, I'm going to apply it on. You do not want it super heavy. You don't want it super thin either. Don't try to like stretch that can as far as you possibly humanly can, but also don't just glue it on because if you stretch it too far, you're not getting enough cement on to properly set up. And if you gloop it on, there's too much there for it to dry enough to set up. So when you get up here, just glue up to these holes on the actual belt. But do not glue there in the middle. Since you've already skived it down and thinned it down right there, as long as you're not like intentionally pressing it together as hard as you can, it's not going to cause that big of a problem. And what we're going to do while this cement is setting up is we're going to put the keeper through it before we glue the two pieces together. Okay, so I've got that glued. While we're waiting for that to set up, we're going to come in here and you're going to want to Feed this through. When you feed this through, make sure you're feeding flesh side down. Otherwise, you're going to have a rough out keeper. And you just want it like even to where you can grab a hold of it and you can fold it out of your way when you're stitching. But we're not going to attach anything at this moment. What you can do at this morning, moment while you're waiting for things to dry to a point where you can actually you know, adhere things together is we can go through and start doing our edge finishing on our billet pieces. I'm just going to bevel around this guy. So if you notice, I didn't really like bother beveling the backside. I will go through and bevel right here, but that's more to take the fuzzies off than anything. 
when you've got leather this thin and it's a transition from something thicker to something thinner, you don't really need to bevel it. Just run it over the burnisher to smooth it down and it'll be fine. Now, and what I mean by that is we can come in here and black these edges. Make sure you black the inside of the narrow edge too. You can come in a little bit. No one will ever see it, so it's not really a problem. Then just take our slicker. And slick around. When you get to that thin side, use a smaller diameter on the slicker and it will actually kind of round that edge out. So we've got those guys down. This is good now. Most people stick their cement together way too fast. Let it sit. Let it get to this nice tacky state. It's going to be wet and then it's going to be dry, but it's not going to be sticky at all. Um, and most people get to that point and they think, oh no, I've let it sit for too long. No, you haven't. Let it sit a little bit longer and it will get tacky. So now from here, I'm going to go ahead and just stick this guy down. If you see, I'm keeping it kicked off while I'm adhering it so that it doesn't accidentally like stick down here. Because when you've got this cement at the right temperature, right dryness level, right tackiness level, the moment it touches, it's stuck and that's it. So you don't get redos. So I'm going to take my wing dividers and set them to where I want my threads to sit. I, I want my threads to be visible when this is stitched, but I don't want them to be like way too close to the edge. So just like that. And I'm going to go all the way down this guy. And I'm putting this line in pretty hard. Uh, I don't recommend using stitching groovers unless you're doing something that's like on tack or boots or something that's going to have a whole bunch of wear on it. Don't use a stitching groover because you're like destroying the strength of the leather itself. A scribed line is perfectly acceptable. If you're hand stitching, you're going to be pulling that thread pretty dang tight down into that groove that you're, or that, that scribed line. If you're using a machine, most machines have an actual piece on the bottom of the foot that shoves that thread all the way down into the material. So from here, I just want to do something a bit decorative. So I'm going to go through and do a gunslinger stitch. And I'm going to kind of tuck it in to where it goes up under the billet a little bit right here. Hopefully it lands pretty clean. The trick with a gunslinger stitch is even if you've got these templates, only do one section at a time because it the belt will curve just a little bit naturally and this is the best way to make sure that you're not like 
getting wonky. Not exactly what I wanted, but I still think it'll look cool. You could also always just measure in between these, mark the center, and then center right there, which is what I should have done. And again, I'm not like going way above and beyond over here and trying to do all of it at once. Move down one at a time so that you can make sure that your stitches are centered. Because that, that minor curvature will get you. Alright, so now that I've got all my stitch lines on the belt blank itself lined out, I'm going to go stitch this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have done all my stitching, did a nice little gunslinger stitch, went through, stitched the edges. From here, you're going to trim these sides up and trim this liner. Try to trim this as close as possible so that when you go to the sander, which is the next step, you're not sanding a whole bunch off. When you start really grinding away with these um, or on leather, you'll start to burn it. And with the veg tan, it likes to bubble up on these edges and turn black. And if you let it do that, you will not be able to get a good burnish on it. You'll have to take it and resand it lightly to get rid of all of that. So if we just take and trim this nice and flush, First, we alleviate all of those problems before they start. Now every now and then it's going to want to like buckle up like it just did. Just come in here, lay it flat on the table and trim it that way. Okay, so I've got this trimmed. It's time to sand it. Now that I've sanded these edges, I'm going to go ahead and just bevel them.
So a couple more steps, obviously. We're gonna come in and you're gonna wanna pull this keeper loop to be like that. The reason is we still have to black these edges. Attention to detail is probably my biggest pet peeve when it comes to leather work. I see so many people making so many cool things, but then they're leaving out the steps that are necessary to make things last for a while or just have a better quality overall. And it's like, yeah, I get it. Tooling and painting and all of that is really fun and just general assembly can be kind of boring, but man, spend the time to do your stuff right. So I'm going to make sure I don't have strings that are going everywhere. And then just put some on right here. And right there. We're gonna let that dry for a second. And while that's drying, I'm gonna scribe my stitch lines. On these pieces. And you don't have to go all the way around down here. Just go past this slot. So I'm gonna go stitch these up while that's drying. I'm not gonna take video of that because it's kind of boring. Okay, so I've got these all wrapped up. First off, I'm gonna put my tip on. We're gonna seat that down in there pretty well. Cool. We're going to set these guys in here. Now these are always a pain in the butt. What you really have to have is a good set of magnetic screwdriver tips because that's uh, about the best way to set these. The magnet holds it in place, lets you get it going. Just like that. These should not be very hard to drive in. Drive them in just a bit. Then back them out. And see how it marks my leather? I'll then take a detail punch and punch a hole right there for the screws to follow. And you kind of want to punch this in so it spreads that leather out as it goes through. That way it locks in place really well. So I've got that side done. Then on this side, So now that that's in, it's time to set our snaps on our buckle end. For this, I'm using Segma snaps because they're nice and compact. Uh, they don't really show all that much. And that's kind of what I want. I want this to be more of a refined look than anything. If I was going for a really big, good truce, you know, I want to sh shove a trophy buckle on there, 
type of look, I would probably use line 20 or 24 snaps for that. But I don't really like that look in a Ranger belt because it's supposed to be clean. So I've got my female side right there. And I'm going to come in here. Set my male sides. Them, make sure they're closed. They should be hard to close because they're brand new. Yep. And sometimes they're like hard enough to close that I sit here and just do that. The first time you close them, they'll spread out quite a bit, so don't worry about it too much. And we're going to come over here. I'm going to glue this together. You want it to have a bit, not a whole bunch, but not really, really tight. You want it to have just a bit of leeway. And then what we'll do is we'll pull this around. And whichever way it closed, see this closed that way. So we'll pull it in that direction. until that join is under here. Then I'm going to take and pretty liberally apply my glue to this piece. Line it up and press it down. And then lift back off. You're just transferring glue to right there to make it easier to uh, open that guy or glue it down this way you're only putting glue right where it needs to go and not all over the place that guy up. do the same to your billet end a little bit heavier than you would normally put your glue on set off to the side, let that glue set up. All right, now that that glue is set up just a bit, we're going to glue this guy down. And then take this one and do the same. And I'm going to go stitch these on real quick. All right. It's all stitched up. Last step is to put your hardware all on. So we'll put our keeper on, put our buckle on, and like I said, after the first time you snap these together, they get a lot easier to deal with. Nice, clean Ranger belt.